young child says to his mother, when I grow up, I want to be a musician. The mom says, well, honey, you can't do both. The Dubler kit, which is software plus this microphone, turns your voice into a MIDI controller. More importantly, I think, it can trigger your voice as drums. Although the software is the main feature and technically you can use a different microphone with this, I tested some microphones at home and they didn't really work, so I think it's kind of important to get the Dubler microphone as well. So not only can you just sing a note and it'll match it to a MIDI note, you can also change which scale you're singing in, whether you want it chromatic or your voice snapped to a scale, and you can also map the vowels you make two different parameters in Ableton. So the way this works is when you sing a note into the microphone, the Dubler software analyzes the frequencies and the overtones and matches those to different vowels. These are often called formants. So you've got your A, O, U, E. It also has this cool envelope knob, which analyzes the amplitude of your voice. So if it's really loud, it'll do that. And that can also be mapped to anything. Remember that you can check the timestamps in the description. You can jump there. Otherwise, just keep watching. So when you open the Voclia Doubler software, this is already my saved profile. You won't see this when you open it for the first time. You want to create a new profile. My mic is attached. Let's start with the drums. No, let's start with not the drums. We need a face cam. Hi. Okay. Uh, let's set up an instrument in Ableton. Cool. Piano top. All right, so you can see what's happening there. It's the whole semitone off, and that's because in the duplicate, duplicate, it's snapping to a scale, I bet you. Yes, it's snapping to a minor pentatonic scale. So let me just start with chromatic. So you can hear it's a little bit like, and to do that, I can change the stickiness. see on those knobs it's analyzing the formants so this e it's not a it's e this also is o like o h not u like u h so o, o and then finally the envelope and that's just the volume now i'm doing softly now we're going to speak louder and louder and louder cool on the effects tab this is where we map effects so in Ableton, let's just map this frequency. So I go Command M, this gets me the MIDI mapping. I'm gonna hit frequency here in my wavetable, but you can use any device. You can use any audio effect. So I've hit frequency. Now I go into the doubler setting and uh, I'm going to make the frequency map to my E. E. I'm gonna hit Command M again. So the more E I'm saying, the lower the filter goes. If I wanted the other way around, so that when I go E, the filter is up, I go back into my MIDI mapping, Control M, and here I can see these min and maximum volumes. I want the minimum value to be only 20 hertz and the maximum 20 kilohertz. Hit Command M again. And of course we can map all sorts of other things, as well as the envelope, but you get the point. See, I've got a sample going. Let's pull something out quick from my sample packs. Alright, cool. That sounds good. This is from my little Beach Up Rainy Day Lo-Fi Keys pack. And um, that's what it sounds like. In fact, it even tells me here it's an A minor. Right, so that's super easy. Let's make this A minor. <laughs> So it's not perfect. For long slow notes, it seems to be fine, but when I do too many changes in notes, it's obviously quite taxing for this little wheel to figure out exactly which note I'm on. So I reckon this is probably something that'll be improved over time as 
the Dublin software gets more updates. In fact, there was one this morning. Also, one thing that I did there that I could do better is instead of having just notes, I can have clear attacks on each each of the notes. So like, do, do, do. Already a huge improvement. Perfect. Another thing you might notice is just that there's a bit of a delay. So by the time I sing and by the time the MIDI note gets triggered, it's just a little bit off. But it's not a huge problem. Hit Command A, hit Command Shift U for quantization, and then boom. One way I could use this is for improvisation. And then I can listen back and decide if I want to keep it. Why is there such reverb? DK, I don't want that. You know, another thing that you can do is you can record your voice in a microphone, drag it into Ableton, and then right click it and convert melody to new MIDI track. And I actually tested it Ableton and the duplicate do a very similar job. That said, I am a pianist. And so for me, it makes more sense to use a keyboard for my MIDI input. A, because it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot more precise. Another thing that you can do is you can put it in chord mode. So I'm going back to Dubla, Dubla. I have confused myself. Let me know, would you call it Dubla or Dubla? I can switch on chords. Boo. This, I really like this, this is cool. So this was an A minor. So let's make sure we're in A minor. Cool. Now we can edit the chords if we want. Let's change the instrument again. So I can take this note and put it at the bottom. I'm just hitting shift and then a downward arrow, which jumps it down an octave. Just to add some variation. Again, if you're a pianist, playing chords on the piano is quicker. For me though, I really like the Dubla kit for its drum triggers. So let's go into Dubla, let's go in Dubla. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Maybe it's Dubla. Hey, George here from Voxpia Music, and in this video, I'll be giving you a full walkthrough of the Dubla software. The Dubla software. It's Dubla. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. All right, we're gonna we're gonna train our trigger. So I push the plus button, I get drum one. I've already got a drum rack prepared. Got my kick, that rim shot, snare, open hat. Okay, I'm just gonna focus on those four. For my drum one, I'm gonna do like a. <laughs> I'm just pursing my lips and put it, pushing air through it, and then, yeah, that's it. So once you've got your sound, you push train here, and this is going to record the sounds that I put into this microphone with my mouth. And I've got a whole bunch of little samples that I can record here that'll help the Dubler software recognize the sound and map it to my drum one, which is on the 36 C1 note, which is this kick six in Ableton. Once I'm done, I push train and I made sure to put in some softer samples as well as some louder samples, just so that there's some variation. Now click anywhere in the screen so that this drum one isn't highlighted anymore. And now Ableton will pick it up. Cool, let's add another one. Drum two, I'm going to use a k sound, k, but without the uh, so just k, 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 k. So we're going to train it. K, 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 k. Now I'll click anyway outside the screen so that the drum's not highlighted. And uh, k, 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 k. awesome. And finally, you know, I'll give you a bonus, <laughs> a little bonus tip. Um, let's do another one. I'm going to do like a hi-hat type sound, like tss, tss, tss. so it's just T-S. And I don't want to have a long release time. So I don't want to go tss. I just want to make it short. Tss. Done. Tss, tss, tss. Hit train. Tss, 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 tss. And it's triggering this over here in Ableton, which happens to be a snare. I can just change that to a hi-hat. And now it's triggering a hi-hat. But I want to keep it as a snare and I'll show you why. If I go into a B section of the song, Maybe I want a different snare, so now I can have a different snare. And uh, 
I really like having an open hi-hat. So I'm going to click in the middle again. And for me, that's going to be like a sound. I'm actually sucking in. So, but without the sucking, it's just a sound. And it's kind of out of the side of my mouth. So I'm going to train it. And if you do it a, a trigger, like I'm doing my kick trigger, but it's going open hi-hat, just make sure in the doubler that you don't have a specific drum highlighted. You always got to click out again, and then it kind of applies it. Yeah. You can also switch off controls here so that I don't get any melodic samples. And um, let's put this to the test. I've got a little sample going here. Just one note in there was off I went but it actually gave me a hi-hat sound it happens sometimes I assume it's just something that happens maybe sometimes my sounds a little bit like a and then the software gets confused so one thing that you can do is just really practice your trigger sounds so that they sound unique make it easy for the software to know what you're saying in a way it's like talking if you're mumbling and slurring all your words, it's hard to really know what you're saying. Oh my goodness. I discovered something so cool using this, like... Have you heard of the melodics? There's like guitar hero, but helping you practice your instrument. I'm a huge fan. Okay, so I'm in melodics now, and um, I'm going to settings. And I've connected my Dubler user, Dubler, gosh. And um, just make sure you map it correctly. So I'm going to map your controller. And I've chosen a four by one because I've only got four sounds. If you're a complete pro at this, you're going to be able to use eight sounds. But I've only triggered four sounds. And now we just check it. So bottom of device, I'm going to do my... Right, and then I can go to my lessons. Obviously, when there's two notes at once, I don't know how to do that with my mouth. So you can go to the basic lessons. We can even trigger samples with this. It doesn't have to be drums. in a simpler and I can literally use this to trigger samples in fact let me just add a drum rack we've got a beat right there I can mention quick is if you don't want velocity sensitivity on then you can change that so you just got to edit and then velocity control make sure it's off if you want everything to be triggered at the same velocity here's another thing you can do so with the doubler you can change the pitches in terms of the octaves that you're singing so if I have a high voice but I want to lay down a bass lay down a bass please then I can just change the octave so to do that, let's go to this control section, let's switch it on. And I want to do an octave shift by like two hours. I mean, two octaves. I also want chord mode off. I want to add some automation on this. There we go. I want the E to map to the heat. I have to click this little triangle to open up this plugin. Heat. That's what I want. So I'm clicking on that and then I'm going to click on the... 
in effect. Great. Awesome. This note's kind of cool. I intended it to be ba, but it came out as ba. And so happy accidents like this can be taken advantage of. I'm gonna add a beach peat. All right, so I'm gonna have the beach repeat. I'm gonna hit Command G, put it in a group, open up the group, hit Command D, duplicate that group. Top one I'm gonna call dry, and I'm gonna delete the beach repeat. So that's just the dry signal going there. The bottom one I'm gonna call wet, and that's the wet signal going there. Now I want the envelope to trigger the balance between these two. If this is complicated, just stick with me, you'll see what I'm doing. I'm going to expand this and then I'm going to map this to macro 1. And I'm also going to map dry to macro 1. Now I'm going to hit map. And I want to invert these two. Again, I'll tell you why I'm doing all of this at the end, so just stick with me. What I now want to do is hit command M, click this chain volume, go in there, map envelope to it. And I don't want to exit. Whoa. All right, so as my volume gets louder, this chain volume is being increased. La. You don't even need a recording input active, record on. It's just getting my envelope. This is really cool. So I'm going to hit Command M again. And uh, I want to change these values. So the louder my voice, basically, the softer the dry volume and the louder the wet one. La. So basically, when I make a note, instead of having this dry chain go through, which doesn't have a beat repeat, it's going to go through this wet chain. And that's going to have a beat repeat. So this is a way for my mouth to make things sound like an SP4. If you want your vowels, i.e. your formants, to change other parameters, you can do that too. And another super simple thing that you can also just do is take out this beat repeat and have the wets always be super quiet. That way, when you make a sound, i.e. when the envelope increases, this chain volume, it pushes things through this wet sound, which is essentially a mute now. And it's a way to get a dropout in the audio. Another way to do this would be to use the actual triggers. So instead of me having the envelope mapped to it, I could map one of my drum triggers to the bypass button. So in summary, what I found using the Voclia Doubler Kit is that I really enjoy it for triggering drums, especially while I'm playing piano. I've often wanted to be able to perform my lo-fi beats in a more live setting, not only using the SP404, and it just hasn't really been possible because I'm limited by the amount of fingers and feet that I have. So being able to trigger drums with my voice while I use my fingers for piano is really cool and I'm hoping to maybe set up a performance soon using that. I do find it's a little risky. Sometimes I'll make a sound with my mouth and it triggers something different, but that's very rare. And also I'm happy to take the blame for that because this is very new to me. So I'm definitely gonna be practicing my trigger sounds with my mouth. 
Using it as a MIDI controller totally works, but I would just want to manage your expectations that it's not perfect. When you sing, you're not a robot. There are slight fluctuations in your voice and depending on your settings in the Dubless Dubler Studio, might pick it up and um, that might annoy you. If you play the piano and you can use a MIDI keyboard pretty well in that you can hear something in your head and play it on the piano, that's a much more efficient MIDI tool, I find. But if you struggle to even hear something in your head and you just need to sing, the doublet kit... Is it doublet? Oh, gosh. The doublet kit can help you get out of your mind, just like recording a voice note can. I've also tried and haven't been able to use this microphone as an actual microphone recording my voice. It would be fun if it had that feature too, since it's clearly picking up my voice. As a singer, it would be really useful to be able to just switch a knob somewhere and have it do both. How this will fit into your studio really depends on your unique skills and what you're hoping to do. Goodbye!